And we are live. Beanie Blessings, welcome to Deadpan Dope Tuesdays with me, Deadpan Lizzie, the Beanie God from Casa de Upper West Side in New York City. This will be recorded on Facebook Live and YouTube. If you don't want to be seen or heard, please mute your mic and turn your camera off. Please unmute for yourself if you do read and then mute when you're not reading out of consideration for your fellow artists. This is a mic for all mediums and all beanies. For those who don't know me, I'm an artist among other professions. A few ground rules, no hate speech or bullying. If I see or hear any of this tonight, get the boot, no questions asked. Like I said, this is a safe space. Like me, many of us have parallel careers and are here to unwind after a long day's work. So please leave the crappy attitudes and beef behind before entering our space. I don't believe in trigger warnings given life is one, but if you feel the need to give them, please do so. Each artist has four minutes to share. We're a small group right now, so I'm not gonna do a time limit right this second, but if we continue to grow, I will. If you would like to perform and you have not told me, please DM me and I will add you to the list. Um, and we're just gonna go over some things that we got going on here at the Word is Right. Um, Cause we have something almost every day of the week cause we support all artists and are happy to do so. Uh, first and third Mondays at 5.30 PM Eastern, we have Cafe Generalissimo with Generalissimo Brian Franco. Uh, and then on when I'm not doing Dead Pen Dope Tuesdays on the second and fourth Tuesday uh, of the month at 1 p.m. Eastern time, Food for Thought with Maureen Medina. Uh, that's a really beautiful workshop. You should go check it out. First and third Wednesdays, you have Right to the Mic with Nick Paleo Logos. And second and fourth Wednesdays at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, we have Christopher Moore, who is with us tonight, hosting his uh, poetry open mic. Uh, Thursdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, Marcia Prado does uh, an open mic on IG. Uh, Fridays, the first Friday of the month, Bronx Art and Fun Hub, uh, Ray of Sunshine with Lady Tiffany and Ed Potastic and Ron Mark Thompson. Uh, second Friday of the month, there's Great Debaters with Marcia Prado and Christy Scribbles. Um, and the third Friday, we have Arts and Rights with Ron Mark Thompson. And then the last Friday of the month, uh, freestyle Fridays of Raging, you, it's an open mic, you can also get to Cypher. First Saturday of the month, we have our Cash Slam. And then on Sundays, we have Poets Anonymous hosted by Tori Lutz, and we have more coming up in the future. So keep an eye on our social media, the words right on IG, Facebook, and YouTube. All right. Oh, sorry. Um, so if you haven't told me, drop it in the chat and um, I will always say who's on deck um, and before each performer. Um, also, I just wanna give a shout out to Christy Scribbles who pinched it for me last time. Appreciate you, Christy. Um, and thank you for subbing for me so I could honor my friend. Also, Mercer Potter runs a publishing house, Red or Green Books. Check that out. Um, Fierce 15, which I'm a part of, is coming out. Our books, as well as the LGBTQ Literary Art Anthology out loud that will make its debut at the New York City Poetry Festival in September. So this is the list for now. I'm sure we'll get to a round two. Um, you don't have to turn your camera on if you're performing. Uh, it's totally up to you. So on deck, we have Christopher Moore. And to start us off, we have D. Allen. And as the advert on Facebook said, bring your own beanie. I'm wearing yes. mine. Yes. Happy you brought your beanie. It looks good on you, D. Happy to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. And for the one person who doesn't know who I am, allow me to introduce myself to you properly. I'm D. Allen from Oakland, California, and I'm going to do two poems for y'all today. Before I go into them, a little Zoom etiquette. If you like what you hear coming from me today, you can respond by leaving your comments in Zoom chat. Send me a direct message through Zoom chat or click on the reactions button. Four, hands clapping. Thumbs up. Or if you totally dig the piece that I just recited, there's the big red heart for love. And to assist me in this endeavor tonight, I'm gonna to use the share screen feature. 
if that's okay with y'all. Absolutely. Um, you should be good to go with screen share. Cool. It works. The first poem happens to come from my new and seventh book, Plans. From pages 39 to 34, and this is one of my favorite pieces in the book. This is called Night Eagle. Dusk hides nothing from the night eagle, himself hidden in the trees, with feathers and wings of sandy hue, bulbousized as black as his native grove. Nick Dephelium Bird watches the wildness and deep darkness, observes change in weather and seasons from the hollows of oaks, broad branches of redwoods. Not a thing escapes his careful, penetrating gaze under the stars. Red men claim the night eagle is the spirit of one of their departed, brought back to earth in avian form, protective, insightful, wiser than he was in life. He gives a sharp chorus of hoots, spreads his wings and flies after intruders on the ground, chasing those field rats back to holes with a nightly abyss. Before the slow coming of day, the night eagle, watcher of the woods, wings of sandy hue, black eyes, is my spirit animal, according to a spinning color wheel on an iPad, on a table, under a tent, a pretty blonde park ranger directed me to. During the stand for the Redwoods Festival, Yerba Buena Gardens, SF, that's short for San Francisco, color wheel rotated clockwise. By the touch of my index finger on screen, then slowed in pace, right side arrow landed on yellow. Northern spotted owl. I don't believe in this spirit animal nonsense at all, but the traits the fabled night eagle has, vigilance, insight, wisdom, lie in me nonetheless. And that poem was called Night Eagle, my ode to the Northern Spotted Owl, bird indigenous to my current home state of California. And that's from my seventh and new book, Plans, from Nomadic Press. And the last piece I'm going to do for y'all is mercifully short, one page. And I'm going to use the share screen feature one more time. Anyone who was born after the year 1950 know who this black gentleman before the mic is. His birthday is gonna be on Thursday, so somebody's gotta acknowledge it. And this poem happens to come from my third book, Stormwater, Poems, 2012 to 2016. From page 33, this is called Turnaround. 180 degree turnaround made several times in one lifetime. From numbers runner and burglar breaking into mansions of moneyed white men, to writer and Muslim messenger reaching into hearts of defeated black men. From hip cat in a zoot suit strutting over Boston bricks, later NYC, to harsh judge holding court before the MIC, charging the Caucasian with being the greatest kidnapper, murderer, robber, and slaver, swine eater on earth. From just another criminal and prisoner in the American nightmare, someone else's dream, to an amazing, powerful, needed critic of American hypocrisy, another's democracy, tearing the veil clean off for African eyes to see. From a servant of separation in the person of, Malai, of Elijah Muhammad in Harlem, to a servant of unity who embraced the true Muhammad in Mecca, from being Detroit Red to Brother Malcolm to El Haj Malik El Shabazz, who dropped his old name long chained to his ancestral slave master's whip hand. Shifty Negro turned strong black man who joined all sexes and races, including his own people, also mine, against the true threat to humanity, which silenced his voice, but not his messages. This divisive nation as it stands, 
by any means necessary. And that last poem was called Turnaround, my own homage to El Hajj himself, Malcolm X. His birthday is gonna be on Thursday, y'all. And that poem comes from Stormwater, still available on Poe Press. From this mic to your ears, I'm D. Allen. Thanks for listening and beanie blessings to you all. Uh, I love, make some noise for D. Allen, y'all. One of my favorite artists and poets in our community. I'm so happy you came through tonight. Buy his books, he's got so many of them. He looks great in a beanie. Beanie blessings to you, D. Allen. Um, we hope to hear you in round two if you stick around. Uh, if you have any links or social media you'd like to share, for, uh, feel free to drop it in the chat where people can also buy your books. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I, I will. Thank you. Absolutely. So happy you're here. All right. On deck, also welcome Christy Scribbles, an urban cowboy poet to the space. They're also part of the Fierce 15. Excited to uh, get my hands on their books when they come out. All right. On deck, we have Chanson. And up to the mic, we have Christopher Moore. Thank you. Okay, I have two tonight. The first one's really short. The second one is a little longer. Um, so I attended Generalissimo Brian Franco's Tumble Words workshop recently, and we were supposed to make a poem out of a saying that Christopher George uh, put out. Um, the saying he put out was, you snapped me eating a tomato as if devouring your heart. So we had to create a poem from that. So this is the poem that I wrote. <clears throat> it's called Second Bite. You came back for seconds from an organ that has too many teeth marks in it already. And the second one I'm going to read is called August Went. <clears throat> I enjoyed the temptations of a summer July day for too long. I tried to get acceptance from those who thought of me as a leftover. They wouldn't give me a second look at even if starving. I have no time to accept your false friendships when I should really be purifying my soul instead. Thank you. Yay, make some noise for Christopher Moore, one of our newest hosts here at the Word is Right team. He's also a part of our Out Loud anthology, so happy to have him with us. Um, you want to talk about anything coming up on your new show, Chris? Um, yeah, I will be hosting an open mic every second and fourth Wednesday of the month. So the next one will be August 20th. No, sorry, not August. <laughs> the next one will be May 25th. Um, sorry, I probably from reading my poem, I said August, but anyway, um, May well, 25th. We'll have it in August, but the next one is in May. <laughs> yeah. Uh, May 25th from 7.30 to 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Time. So uh, I'll put the link in the chat, et cetera. Awesome. And yes, I attended the premiere of it last week, and it was a really nice open mic, so I highly recommend it. Um, so happy he's a part of our War is Right team. Thank you, Chris. Yes. And we'll we'll hear more from you later tonight. Thank you for All attending. Right. Yeah, I, I really had fun with it. I had a I read an epic pan coup and it was a lot of fun. All right. On deck we have Christy Scribbles, but up now we got my favorite bassist and yours, Ethan Mackler. <laughs> Is Chanson up though? I thought I saw his name. Oh, yeah, I must read my thing. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Chanson. On deck is Ethan, and up now is Chanson. Thank you, Ethan. Sorry about that, Chanson. No problem. Um, so I have one haiku and a new poem I just wrote today. <sighs> Free calls after nine always text me before that. Can't waste my minutes. And um, this poem is untitled, but I'm looking for a title. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by, as bullets ravage the bodies 
of the innocent and guilty alike. The land of the free and home of the brave has been degenerated to the point of being a captive war-torn country, saturated in cowardice. Life bearers of this world are cut down prematurely, leaving their immature fruit with hardly an ability to live. Adolescents meet a fateful end before they've had a chance to begin. Perversion for young girls who are being coerced into sex slavery may never see their families again. Murder rates are high, morale is low, but this will never become the new normal. Graves are dug, purse wheels have rolled, the earth has been saturated, by human tears, causing the daisies to grow. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? There is a balm in the land if we would simply repent. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Chance, on both powerful pieces. Um, and you have a new show here at The Word is Right, right? Yes, um, it is every second and fourth Sunday at 5 Eastern, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, Hear Me Cool is the name of the um, the workshop. And um, we'll be on um, this coming Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern. And um, it'll only be on for the months of May, June, and July, um, the second and fourth Sundays at 5 p.m. Eastern. Awesome, awesome. Yes, those are um, postcards um, where you can send postcards to poets all over the world who runs that program here at the Words Hope. Thank you so much, Shinsen. We look forward to um, hearing you more in round two. From now on deck, we got Christy Scrubbles. And now we have my favorite bassist, Ethan Mackler, bringing us some music from Massachusetts.
Ethan on bass the last couple of weeks. I'm so happy to get to hear him tonight. Make some noise for him. Yes. Always good to hear you, Ethan. Check him out and Jeff Taylor at Garage Poets every Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can find them on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, anything else you have coming up, Ethan? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. Um, hold on. Let me... Well, around here we are uh, playing in uh, the Boston area for Porch Fest in Malden. Uh, that should be all this stuff is posted. Should be posted on the uh, Garage Poets open mic, and um, I'm drawing a blank. There is other stuff. I usually hit Mondays at Portobello's Restaurant and Pub in uh, Brighton, or alternating Mondays. That's live in person. I jam with people usually and solo and 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 whatever. Uh, yeah, other stuff. Uh, yeah, draw a blank, but yeah, there's uh, Garage Poets Open Mic on Facebook. That is the place to check out our stuff. Awesome. Well, if you remember later, you can promote it in round two. Uh, check them out. They're awesome. If you're in the New England area, go check them out live and hang out with them. Uh, they're a fun group of musicians and artists and poets. Um, so happy to have Ethan with us tonight, as always, and we'll hear more from him uh, later this season. Thank you so much, Ethan. Oh, and speaking of basis, we're going to have our first feature um, for June 7th, which is first June, uh, first Tuesday of June next month. Uh, Jane Spoken Word and her partner, Albie on Bass, will be featuring here. So when you, um, we'll do the open mic first and then they'll feature Albie is a great bassist uh, here in New York. And they, uh, they're going to come check you guys out next time they're up in Massachusetts because they go up to Massachusetts a lot. So I gave them the Garage Poets information. Um, you'll have fun together. They're two of my favorite people in the world. They have amazing vibes and they're so, uh, so, so talented and just good people. I, I hang out with them here in New York. They're really, really, really amazing. All right. Well, thank you, Ethan. So the next three people are part of the Fierce 15. I'm so happy to have them here. On deck, we got Irving Cowboy Poet. And up next, the woman who pinched it for me and did it brilliantly a couple weeks ago. I love her so much. She is a part of the Fierce 15. You have to get her book. Please welcome to the mic in her beanie, Christy Scribbles. Hello. Okay. Um, I am working on my book that I'm that I wrote with um, channeling the elements and this one is from the fire section combustion combusts. I go to go find flint the flame is lit fire to wood fire to wood and the burning burns and the wood collapses. As the thermal degradation begins, as the flame hits wood and temperature rises, and the waters boil and evaporate, and gases are released, and when the moisture is completely gone, boom, combustion starts, cellulose decomposes, and this will lead to the char and the tar, and then all the gases evaporate and mix with air to make smoke or catch fire to burn flame. And then what is left is charcoal, of course, and it just burns, slowly burning, waiting to be rekindled by the blowing of some air. And then ash is left to tell the tale of the fire. Oh, what a thing. Oh, what a thing when wood turns to flame. Thank you. Make some noise for Christy Scribbles, y'all. And follow her at the Poetry Alchemist, get her book, Channeling uh, Elements, coming out soon with the Fierce 15. Um, she is amazing and she does such good work for our community. And she also co-hosts Great Debaters with Marissa Prada's on the second 
Friday of each month, which is a lot of fun. So check that out here at the Words Right, Marissa and Christy. Thank you so much. And we'll hear from her later this evening. All right on deck, we got Terry Rose. But up now, my urban, my favorite urban cowboy poet and yours, Greg Michaels. Hi. Uh, Hello. I'm unmuted, right? I'm here. Yep, you're good. Yeah, I got into the at the last minute into the first 15 and I rushed to get my manuscript into Marissa. Then last night, Monday night, I was at BWAM, so I was looking at this old poem and I realized I didn't get in the manuscript. So I had to rush it in. I said, oh, well, I'll do that one now. And I hadn't done, what? Oh no, go, go ahead. Hadn't done it in a while and I messed it up real bad. So I'm gonna do it again tonight and get it right. I just want to say I've probably sent Marissa like 20 drafts of Kundabini. So you probably sending her just two or three is no big deal because she's been very patient with me making oh, little yeah, updates I know. to there'll be more draft. There'll be more drafts. Just, they'll just be tweaking. Unless I could get this one more right rip, but I'm talking like a cowpoke already. Anyway, suicide by murder. Manhattan cops see a lot of deaths, but some can still surprise. Take the case of Ronald Opus, who jumped off on a high rise. If you'd guessed he'd splattered in the street, you'd lose that bet. Around the seventh floor, some window washers hung a safety net. When the fire department reached him, they had hopes that he weren't dead. But although, although the net had stopped his fall, he'd been shot plumb full of lead. The young man had died anyway. What made it extra sad is that it happened outside the flat of Ronald's mom and dad. Now, Ronald's parents were famous for being mean and rich. Mom disinherited Ronald. Dad called her a bitch. The elder Opus led a pretty volatile kind of life. Every couple of weeks or so, he threatened to kill his wife. He'd shoot her with a shotgun, which he'd always kept unloaded. On this particular tragic day, the weapon done exploded. The shot went through the window, just a couple stories down from where Ronald Jr. had begun his planned trip to the ground. Ronald had failed at jumping and death, and yet the boy was gone. Now it looked like he'd been murdered, but who could they pin it on? I never loaded that weapon, is the story his father tells. And some mysterious enemy inserted the shotgun shells. The police wanted to charge the father with some kind of crime. His wife declared, he's innocent. He does this all the time. The old man claimed, it's just a game. The makeup sex is fun. Neither one of them had the slightest clue as to who had loaded the gun. An investigation ID'd the proof. The perp fingerprints were the proof. The gun had been loaded by Ronald, who just jumped off the roof. The DA found no precedent in the law books on his shelf. He couldn't charge a dead man with the murder of his self. There was in fact a suicide note as the police had predicted. Ronald had gotten tired of being poor and drug addicted. His first plan was to load the gun he knew his dad would shoot. With his mother dead and his dad in jail, he'd inherit the family loot. But time went by, no murder occurred. Ron couldn't wait for more. He resolved to end his life by leaping from the 11th floor. The opuses had found that note, which sparked this evening's fight. So Ronald had directed his own demise. His timing was just right. He planned a murder, then a suicide. And though the plot got twisted, he succeeded at both, with only one Vic, if not quite unassisted. The M.E. ruled his suicide, strangest case he ever seen. To like the man had offed himself with a Rube Goldberg machine. Thank you. And it goes something like this. Oh, make some noise for UCP, everyone. Yeah, yeah, make some noise. We always love hearing your urban legends. We always love hearing your legends. What's the what's the name of your book again? Yeah, it's a big, big surprise. Urban Cowboy Poetry. Oh, I love it though. It's you. <laughs> get his get his book or, or um with all the uh, other fierce 15 poets also we got poet palooza coming up and you can enter a raffle to win all 15 books so go to redergreenbooks.com or check out the social media pages on ig 
and Facebook for more on Poet Palooza. That will be August 7th in the afternoon. And it's going to be every single author ever published a Frederick book. So it'll be the first 10, the next 10, The Fierce 15, The Touching Tongues, Women's Erotic Poets, which I'm included, that anthology, and our new out loud LGBTQ anthology poets. Um, it's going to be a fantastic afternoon. A lot of us will also be in person at the New York Poetry Festival this year in September. Um, so check for more on that red or green books. Um, it's going to be a fabulous day. I can't wait for it. Thank you so much, Urban Cowboy Poet, and we'll hear more from you later tonight. All right, and keep going. On deck, we got Marianne. And up next, another Fierce 15 poet, The Chameleon Chronicles is her book coming out soon. She's getting a ton of great reviews. Please welcome Terry Rose. Still with us, Terry? Oh, she might have stepped away. Well, if uh, when Terry comes back, we'll look back to her. Uh, but we're going to go right ahead to Marianne Peterson. Oh, OK. This one's called Children Are Our Future, I wrote yesterday. Children are our future. We need to listen to them. They can help lead the way into a better future. Children may have better ideas than us. Children can teach us just like we teach them. Children will lead the way. Children are carefree. Children are innocent. Children see the good in each of us easier than we do. Children will set examples for us down the line. Children are important. Yes, children are important. Very, that's beautiful and powerful. Do you have another piece you'd like to share with us for round one? Yeah, I do. This uh, one is uh, called I Take Back the Power. It's based on a writing prompt of power. I wrote yesterday as well. I take back the personal power from everybody who hurt me. I take back my life. I take back the power that was taken from me years ago. I take back the power of my life. I'm happy now. Nobody will take my power from me again. I'm my own person. I have my own power. I take back the power I originally had before I went through trauma. I take back my power. I'm free now. Yes. Speak those truths. Thanks. That's what we do here at Dead Pan Dope. We speak our truths. Thank you so much, Marianne. Um, anything, okay. anything you want to plug or have coming up? I do have both. Uh, uh, on May 31st, I have uh, the finals of for uh, the Galaxy's Got Talent, and that's at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Oh, congratulations it's on that. It's a Zoom uh, thing. It said uh, Zoom on it, so he's going to give that to a performance later, the Zoom. And uh, it's uh, like a dollar to watch. Well, I think we all have a dollar to watch that. We all need to go check that out. Drop that link in the chat so we can follow and give our dollar. Uh, congratulations on that. Always happy when you come through and we look forward to hearing around too. Marie Medina just came in. She's also part of the Fierce 15. So happy she's here. We just missed each other in New York, but we'll see each other in September at the New York Poetry Festival. Also, the cover of her book is absolutely stunning. Um, when this book comes out and you see it, it's just going to make it so gorgeous. Shane Maynard outdid herself, um, but Maureen was a big part of that collaboration. Uh, Maureen, if you are ready, would you like to read? Oh my goodness. Uh, hi, everyone. <laughs> Is Does someone else want to go first? You know, well, well, we just finished our first round. So if you want to finish it out for our first round before we hop into round two, I'd love to hear something from you, if you're ready. Uh, sure. Um, there's actually a piece that I wrote like uh, soon after Biden was elected that I want to practice performing. Absolutely. So um, trigger warning if you're racist or a hater in any way. <laughs> and this is meant to be like sarcastic, so. <clears throat> America is under attack. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, please God, protect the supremacists, MAGA terrorists, better known as patriots, alt-right, white is right, to hell with their colored compatriots, Camp Auschwitz, erase the indigenous, six million wasn't enough, four centuries and counting aren't enough, 
Insurrection wasn't enough. Impeachment wasn't enough. Let's ask McConnell. Blue Lives Matter, except at the Capitol. USA, KKK, Parlay. What did the Fox say? It's all in parlor. They say all lives matter except the black ones, except the brown ones, except the female ones, except the trans ones, except the queer ones, except non-human ones. All whites matter. This isn't the America they know, born of justice and peace for their kind. But there is no justice, no peace when we are murdered in our sleep. When we say we can't breathe, when our necks are crushed by knees, gunned down wearing hoodies, gunned down buying candy, destroyed for existing. Systemic genocide, stand back and stand by, orders by 45, who's now been impeached twice. Stop the steal. Yes, stop the steal. Stop stealing the peace of a fairly won election. Concede, we chose Biden. Stop stealing lands and identities and calling it colonization. Stop appropriating our culture, our grief, and calling it assimilation. Stop stealing our dignity or attempting to, because that's straight up degradation. Stop your stealing, suppressing, and sedition. Stand back and stand by. Orders by 45. Wholly incapable of abiding by democracy. Inside all the proud boys and girls, grab them by the motherfucking pussy including the first female VP. Oh, Harris, they want the sugar without the spice. You are the first in the house, but not the last. Shatter the glass, there is no ceiling. Let's move forward, please, no blast from the past. No more mass deportation, no more mass incarceration. Let's change the system where the currency is our lives. Change the climate from ice to fire, because we've been hungry long before the strike. And if hate is all we've got, where does that leave our melting pot, scorched with gunshot residue? This election can't just be another shot in the dark, enough with the oligarchs who condemn anarchy while inciting violence and patriarchy. In a country divided by rhetoric that fits in a 280 character limit, there are no filters, no limits, tweet size fascism. Can we all just get along, left, right? Let's put aside our differences because we are all very special. Go home. I love you. Those are words from 45. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. I am, I'm speechless. That was amazing. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yes. We cannot let that happen again, y'all. Gotta vote for good people to save our rights and our uteruses and save sex marriage and all that stuff. Because I can't, we can't live through that hell anymore. Thank you so much, Maureen. Um, your words are always incredibly powerful. Let people know the name of your book where they can find you and also attend her workshop the second and fourth Tuesdays, 1 p.m. Eastern time here at the Words Right. It's a fabulous workshop. Thank you. Uh, my book is called My Fears Out Loud. Um, and yes, as uh, Liz said, I host workshops the second and fourth Tuesday of the month at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And I will be featuring at two events this week in honor of AAPI Heritage Month. So I'm gonna put my info in the chat. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you for being here and for everything you do. And yes, it is AAPI Heritage Month. Um, so thank you for sharing that and um, making sure everyone is aware. All right, that is how we're gonna close out the first round. We're gonna go back to the top of our list for round two. So on deck, we got Christopher Moore and back up to the mic, we have Dee Allen. Um, Strauss, I'm only doing two poems tonight. Oh, okay, no worries. Um, if you don't wanna read for round two, that's really fine. All right, so Thank we Thank you for have... understanding. Yeah, of course, no pressure here. We're just a space where you can hang out, read. There's no pressure to read again. On deck, we're gonna have Chan Sun, but up now we're gonna have Christopher Moore. 
<clears throat> okay, sounds good. Um, I was to a workshop that Generalissimo sent me to last week. And with all the horrors and the bad stuff going on, this workshop had a writing prompt and the only writing prompt, and this, this was amazing because I've never heard of this kind of writing prompt before. Um, normally, if I do a writing prompt, it's like something like current events, misery, et cetera, et cetera. But this one was like, for our writing prompt, just tell us something good. And I really loved that and it spoke to me. So I wrote one about a friend of mine who really makes me feel like happy. So it's untitled, but <clears throat> this is it. She fixes her hair as she smiles, as she sees me walk by. I think she is beautiful the way she is, but for some reason she does it anyway. Her smile always seems to brighten my day as it feels like I'm on a cloud whenever talking to her. Thank you. I love that, Chris. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, anything else you'd like to share in round two? Oh, no, that's it. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that and your other poetry with us tonight. Uh, like I said earlier, check him out second and fourth Wednesdays of the month with more poetry. And he's also a part of our Out Loud anthology. All right, on deck, we got Ethan. And back up to the mic, we got Chanson. All right, um, so tonight I wanted to share um, a poem that I wrote called The Bathroom Poem. Use soap and water when you scrub, then clean the tub. Be careful where you stoop, wipe yourself after you poop. Make sure you flush, put your fingers on the handle and push. Make sure your hands are squeaky clean. Have a good day, jelly bean. And let's see. Um, state, state of emergency. Baltimore City in state of emergency. May we bow to pray under Silver Queen. Bullet, mm, bullets hit an officer fighting for her life. It's nothing to you. Are we keeping anyone? Let's pray and speak out. Matter of spiritual distancing. They have done right. Mm, they have done what is right in their own eyes. Thank you. Oh, thank you for sharing that, Shanson. I always appreciate you. Thank you. And we are, he's going to close us out later tonight with Beanie Blessing. So we'll hear from more from him later tonight. Um, good night, UCP. Always good to see you. Get his book with the Fierce 15, Urban Cowboy Poetry. Buy his book. All right. So on deck, we have Terry. Oh, excuse me, on deck we have Christy, but up to the mic now we got Ethan.
all the musicians that come through. Ethan inspires me to want to learn how to play bass. I have it in the notes section of my phone that I'm going to try to learn how to play bass in the next year. Uh, thank you so much, Ethan. Check him out in Massachusetts and the England area and Garage Pose with Jeff Taylor. They do great things. It's a great mic. I've been on Garage Pose. It's really fun. Really fun. Anything, anything else you want to promote that you, uh, you didn't earlier? Uh, well, I can post it, but I did want to say when I was uh, going on to Facebook to find the link for this, I in the search I put deadpan dope, and I got a warning, like, are you sure you want to proceed? It is associated with drugs, or maybe associated with drugs. That's happened to me before when I typed in deadpan dope. Yeah, we don't, we don't associate drugs here, deadpan dope, but I'm glad that Facebook, but we are 420 friendly. I'm 420 friendly. If you were watching uh, the launch on Sunday with Red Ring Books, I was raspy for a reason. We had fun at Nuo on Saturday night. That's all I'm going to say. Anyway, I think so. Yeah, do it when you type in Dead Pando, hopefully it comes up me and not, um, not, not, not drugs. But um, check out Garage. But if you type in Garage Poets on Facebook, it'll lead you to Jeff and Ethan, and they're doing great things there. Thank you so much, Ethan. All right. Well, on deck, she's back. We got Terry, but up now we got Chris Scribbles. All right, Miss Scribbles. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna do one from Water. Um, Pisces Stellium. Today starts my water day and I look to the stars. I see the Pisces stellium has appeared and it all makes sense in the why. Water has made its way to me today. The moon and Venus and Mars and Jupiter and Neptune all float inside of Pisces today. And as the water takes me away, I call to these planets, these celestial energies to allow the words to flow and the magic to bubble up from within me. In the Piscean me, the February fairy me, with rainbow hues head to toe me, jumps up into the stars and flies around the moon and Venus and Jupiter and Neptune and Mars, and I can feel their energies wanting to be called out. So I do in this book on this page, and I continue to play and swoop and slide around the galaxy, and the ethereal me squeals with glee as the constellation of Pisces dances with me in delight and the moon winks as I whirl past her. And in this moment, I see earth out of the corner of my eye and it reminds me of where I need to be. So I say goodbye to my sweet dear friends as the descent back to physical form begins. And I say to the stars, the planets, the moon, see you soon friends, see you soon, thank you. This water sign, love that. Oh, I'm so excited Ooh. for her book. I'm gonna devour it in one sitting. I know I am. I'm just gonna take a day with my tea and just devour earth, wind, and earth, wind, fire, and air. I'm so excited for it. I'm a Cancer, so we're even more sensitive than Pisces. 
I think I, sh I think I showed you my chart once, right? It's cancer. And then it's just like Leo. Even you were shocked. You're like, that's too much. It's too much fire to have in one person. <laughs> Follow her online, Poetry Alchemist. Great debaters with Word is Right. Get her book, Loretta Green book. She's doing great things. She looks great in a beanie. That's a bonus. I love her beanie. I got to get me a blue beanie. Thank you, Miss Scribbles. All right. On deck, we got Marianne. And up now, she's also part of the Fierce 15. The Chameleon Chronicles is coming out soon. She read from her book this weekend. She's got her, she's got her cool mug with her. She's part of the New Jersey Trinity out there. Please welcome Terry Rose. Hi. Uh-oh, what'd I do? Did I shut my camera off? I didn't mean to. You did. You did. This, I'm, I'm on this like, uh, my God. <laughs> I'm on this antiquated device also, which I can't even control the volume on it. That's how bad it is. Like I try to turn it all the way down and it's still like, rah, rah, rah. and then I try to do two and three things at one time. And then I can't because it blows my cover. This is blasting in the background. <laughs> anyway. <coughs> Yay. Okay. So I wrote some new, new shit. This is all new shit. The train whistle is really loud. It's near my house. And you know how, you're, how you block certain things out that you hear all the time? And then sometimes your brain will let the sound back in. And it's like you're hearing it for the first time. And you say to yourself, Jesus, that shit's loud. And you come to the realization that the brain is an incredible instrument to be able to do that. <laughs> That's that piece. And I have one I just wrote like five minutes ago. Huh, where's the beginning? Okay. A man came to my door today, sparkling blue eyes and white beard with a walking stick. He had a paper with clipboard and he asked me if I would like a tree placed in front of my house to even out the street. I thought that would help the environment, but my mind flashed back to two years ago when the tree on my neighbor's yard fell on my house. And I said, I would consider it if the tree didn't fall on my house. <laughs> he said, that only happens to older trees. I said, well, how big would it get? And he said, about seven feet. I could not get over the idea of having a flowering magnolia in my yard and the opportunity to have that memory so close to home. This isn't finished, but um, I'll just tell you because I didn't write it. On, this, on the paper was the selection of trees and on the paper was magnolia tree was one of the selections. So I was like, yeah, I checked that off. Some memories are too good to be forgotten. <laughs> so that's the end of that piece right now. And I have a bunch of haikus that's all about my body, my choice. I'll go, I'll just go. Babies, wait a minute, I don't wanna start there. Babies in buckets, godless society says abortion is choice. Babies drowned in sea, Planned Parenthood fallacy, she made up her mind. Don't confuse her with the facts. If you don't know, you need to. Check the history birth control minorities of raci racist nation. Keep the numbers down, society made away, fear mentality. Babies plucked from wombs, white supremacy changed rules, see what they did there? My body, my choice, rules, I mean, my body, my choice, need to make a correction, rules on conception. Origin story, failed attempt to cover lies, comes as no surprise. Ways to control us, they need to diminish truth, battleground of the mind. Sacred place of womb, we lost the right to choose who's no more, baby girl. Put on the pink hat, there's no wrong or right to life. Go march in the street, go tell your story, gather your daughters and wives, follow the money. Open your third eye to see the bigger picture, fathers and husbands. 
government control case of morality rules thinks we're all fools. So thank you. Give us some noise Ooh. for Terry Rose. Woo! Peace. Body, my choice. Woo, Terry! Yes, my body, my choice. All right, yeah, check her out with the Fierce 15. Chameleon uh, Chronicles, words got never yep. spoken, $15. I have PayPal, I have Instagram, iFunny's mom, and I have Facebook, Teresa Rose Jertsen. If you want the book, please smoke signal me, you know, uh, do the, you know, the, the Morse code me or however you want to communicate to me. I am there for it. Just let me know. I'm going to send Thank her you. a headwig for my book. Is that the name of the owl is in Harry Potter? <laughs> Hedwig, right? I think so. I'm a millennial. I should know that. I'm pretty sure. I think it's Hedwig that sent the messages in Harry Potter. Oh, I, you know what? I'm not a fan of Harry Potter. I know I'm probably the only person in America to say this, but no. I mean, I, I just a little creepy and scary to me. So I just was like, meow, meow. I'm, no, he, my ex didn't like Harry Potter. So, you know. No one has to like Harry Potter. I just, and I rainbows and unicorns that fly and poop, you know, rainbows. That's what I'm into. <laughs> I mean, I'm queer and fly, but I don't, I don't poop out rainbows. I just, it just smirches rainbows all over the sidewalks. <laughs> Peace and anyway. love. <laughs> yeah. And I thank you so much, Cherry. Drop your links in the chat. Follow her on IG. Get a copy of her book. And she'll be at the Mere Poetry Festival with her book. And she's also a part of the Touch and Tongues anthology with me. So get a copy of that. Um, so September uh 10th and 11th in new york city the jersey trinity is coming to governor's island so we are very excited for, uh, yes we're excited for that um speaking of jersey trinity check out uh right to the mic tomorrow night with nick Pale logos here on word is right um my twisted twin brother so check that out tomorrow night starting at 7 30 eastern standard time all right on deck we got Marie, and up now we got Marianne. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, something uh, different. I'm going to read a very short story out of my uh, newest book of such and other short stories. So this is called A Ferret Named Sally. This is one of the cuter stories in here. Once there was a ferret named Sally who got into loads of mischief. So I kept stealing things from her owner and hiding them on her. One day, Sally stole a necklace that her owner really liked and wore a lot. Sally's owner was really upset when she could not find the necklace when she was planning on wearing it that night. Sally's owner had a date that night, so she wanted to dress up and wear the necklace. Since she could not find her favorite necklace, she decided to wear a different one to her date night. Sally's owner and her date went to a sea movie, and then they went out to eat after the movie was over. They went to an expensive steakhouse for dinner. Sally's owner had fun with her date, even though she was still upset with Sally for stealing her necklace she originally wanted to wear. She got up with the necklace for a little bit while she was on her date. When she got home, though, she started looking for the necklace again, and this time she found it. What she found was under her bed. So I saw her favorite necklace was a heart necklace. She was happy she found the necklace. She wore it out to another date, and I was the same guy she went with before. She eventually married the guy she dated, and they lived happily for many years before the guy died suddenly from a major heart attack. So I saw her was sad when that happened. She wanted for a long time with her, she would allow herself to date again. So I too, eventually died from old age. And Sally's owner mourned that loss also for a long time. Sally's owner eventually got a new pet ferret, and she became happy once again. She eventually remarried, and she was happy with that guy, too. She did not have to feel alone anymore because she had a new husband and a new pet ferret. Yes, Marianne. Mm -hmm. Always love hearing you. Always love your work. Thanks. Anything else you'd like to perform? Yeah, you can. This is, is one of my poems called Mother Nature. I wrote on the 15th of this month. Mother Nature can act bipolar sometimes. One day it could be nice, and the next day it could be a rotten day. Mother Nature sometimes can't seem to make up her mind. I like when Mother Nature gives us nice days. I don't like when she gives us rotten days. I like the warmth. I don't like the cold and rainy days. I like the summer. I don't like winter. 
I don't like a bunch of rain. I want it to be warm. I don't want it cold. Mother Nature we can't control. Mother Nature does her own thing. Oh, Mother Nature. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Love both those pieces. Thank you so much for sharing them. Mm -hmm. And check her out. You said May 31st, right? Yep, May 31st, yes. Yeah, check her out on that Zoom. It's only $1. We all have $1. We can all give mm -hmm. $1. Mm -hmm. So drop that info in the chat. Go support Marianne. Mm -hmm. uh, she's awesome. Um, always love hearing your work. Thank you so much for coming through tonight. Yep, you're welcome. Bye. All right. All right. Um, all right. So last up for round two, where we close out tonight, is Marie Medina. Hello again. Um, I'll share two short pieces. <clears throat> Trigger warning, um, violence against females. The first one is called Use Your Words. Violent when violated, use your words, they said, but I always talk with my hands. That's how I make them understand that I will never again be violated, even when you get violent. And the second one is called worth. Let's talk about worth. Am I unworthy because I don't have curves? Am I unworthy because I've never given birth? born a child, our future generation? Am I unworthy because my breasts have never swelled up with milk nourishing another? Am I unworthy because my uterus is empty, vacant, as long as I can help it? And say I did all those things and was all those things. If a female produced a life with the power that is her, what if a female gave sustenance to a child, innocent and fragile? And what if, because she provided for them, loved them and raised them, they became strong and beautiful? Would she be worthy then? Then why do you feast on those who are worthy? Why do you dig your teeth into someone's child and feed them to your own? Why do you demand the milk from their breasts when you no longer suckle on your mother's? What entitles you to the body, soul, and essence of a being just because you need something to spread on your toasted bagel, a little sweet for your black coffee? What entitles you to crispy carcinogenic strips accompanied with the menstruation of another being, sunny side up? A breakfast of champions, you call it. Are you the champion of broken families, mass destruction of forests, depletion of Earth's natural resources and unspeakable cruelty? Please tell me, how do we assign worth? Can we honor it by not commodifying or controlling it? Who is worthy? Think about that and then act accordingly. Thank you. This is what Dead Pan Dope is about, y'all. We speak the truth. We are unafraid to. Marine Medina is one of my favorite poets in our community. I am so honored to be published alongside her and the rest of the Fierce 15. Get her book. She is my vegan sister. Uh, go to redorgreenbooks.com or her link tree to get a copy. You got to get your hands on that book. And I cannot wait to meet you uh, in September at the Poetry Festival. Um, anything else you'd like to say, Maureen? Oh. Um, just get her book at Red Green Books or her link tree that she's got uh, in her Zoom box. Um, always a pleasure to hear you and be in the same space as you. Thank you. All right, before we go to be blessings, uh, I have been, I don't usually read in this space, but I have been asked to read a poem tonight. Um, it includes a pantu in it. Uh, it's from yes, I wrote it yesterday. It's called Raspberry Light. The center of our galaxy. Sagittarius B2, 
they say as you force yourself closer to the center of the Milky Way, the flavor of the raspberry begin to linger in your nostrils, the taste of rum intoxicating your tongue. I'll take the raspberry seeping into my pores, helping me forget about the shit back on earth. Rum, rum only makes my head hurt and stomach ache, unless it's Rum Tum Tugger, the fictional feline who makes me smile. I leave the brown liquor with the creatures I cannot spend any more time figuring out. If I could sit in my crescent moon with a cup of black tea, just a hint of my favorite berry, the stars massaging me, jazz notes dancing around the solar system, perhaps I could feel at peace. Closing my eyes to thank our siblings from China for the gift of tea, praying as I sip on my nightly elixir that every child enjoys this as much as me, the Sagittarius rising in me, trying to lift the rest of the world but I myself am not strong enough sometimes to put out the flames that cause drama down below. The light is gentle up here in my moon. The more I look down below, the faster my heart begins to race. Unhappy as I stare at the puddles of water, they all keep furiously splashing around in. I will stay in place with my tea until Apollo shines his face on me. And that is raspberry light. Woo! Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it has been a lovely night. I'm so happy to be back hosting. Um, I love spending Tuesdays with y'all. To close this out with Beanie Blessings tonight, we will have Chan Sella. All right. We close out our time together, staring up at the same sky. Whether the sun kisses down on your face, the cotton candy clouds begin to swirl in the early evening, the crescent moon fades in as the constellations begin to dance throughout the night, we all look up at the same sky. Thank you for being the sky, soil beneath our feet, and our family with your presence and art. Thank you for taking the time to create. Thank you for holding space. May you squirt out poems, kitty style, in dreamland. May we always have beanies to keep us warm and stylish. This has been Deadpan Dope Tuesday, open mic with the word is right. Hosted by Deadpan Lizzie, the beanie god. On behalf of our community, I chance on, bid you adieu. Until next time, beanie blessings. Any blessings until next time.